Today, I'm going to teach you how to use Photoshop to make this photo on the left, which is Ristel, to the right, giving her a smooth and natural looking skin. I'm Richard and welcome to Zappy Productions. Today, we'll be a tutorial using Photoshop on how to get the left to the right, which is to give the subject a smooth and really nice looking skin that is natural with texture left. Now, there is many ways to do it and this is the way that I'm using and of course, this way I'm teaching is something that I find it relatively good and reversible so you can actually control it much easier. So now, if you do not want to go through all my tutorials, you can of course donate me 10 or more coffees in my link below and I can give you a bunch of actions and also a tutorial on how to use all the actions in one go. But if not, just follow on my tutorial over the next few weeks and pretty much you will learn how to do every single thing. For today's tutorial, there will be two parts that is going to cover. Firstly, there will be the burn, heal and dodge and that one will be really short coverage because I have done a tutorial earlier. Do click on the link up there or is it there? Uh, just click on the link and then, you know, go through the tutorial first before going through this because that will teach you the fundamentals of how to, you know, burn, dodge and heal a person's face to remove unnecessary shadows. After that, it will be followed up by a frequency separation tutorial on how to really edit the skin and smooth out the unnecessary, you know, I will say as patchiness in the colours on the skin itself. And together, it will give you that photo as you can see here, the left to the right, which is Ristel in a most beautiful form. So now, without further ado, let's go into the tutorial itself. As I said, the tutorial will be made out of two parts. Firstly, is the burn, heal and dodge. And once again, if you have not seen the tutorial, I recommend you go and see it first. And it is in the link below in my description. But you know, for me, because I've already done it a lot of times, so I'm just going to straight away run an action to do it. And that will be my preparation layer. Straight away, I'll run it and I will get this preparation layer which is exactly what I teach in the tutorial. So there is a total of four items. Firstly, there is the healing layer. Secondly, there is the burn layer, the dodge layer. And lastly, there is the layer to actually emphasize the shadows and flaws on the skin so that you could smooth it better. So now we're going to go through the healing layer first and just remove all the, you know, uh, I would say as uh, blemishes, acne, and all those really unnecessary items on the face itself first. And for that, I'll be using the healing tool and I'm going to do it really quick in this tutorial itself. Okay, I have healed finished the skin as you can see. So now I'm going to apply the selective burn and dodge to remove the shadows and also to, you know, contour a little bit of her nose. Now, before I go on to do it, you know, just remember that your flow rate should be about 3 to 5%. If you have seen my previous tutorial, I will have already emphasized it a few times. But 3 to 5% with a mask and a curve will pretty much give you a good control on how to burn and dodge easily on a person's face. Now, pretty much if you've seen I, what I've done so far, you know, through my high speed replay, you have seen that pretty much I'm removing most of the flaws on her face through the burn dodge and heal technique. And that's important because the next part, which is just smoothing out the skin to make it look really nice and perfect. Uh, the more you do in this stage, the lesser you need to do in the next stage because the next stage can be literally mind-blowingly easy. And now if I remove that, black and white filter, you can see that most of her face in terms of texture, everything is fine. So of course, there is some, you know, things here that don't look really good and I'm going to use a heel brush to solve this problem. Okay. And if not, okay, there is still some darkness here. Let me solve it out now. Okay, so now you have noticed that the skin is pretty much edited to a certain extent. Of course, there is still some, you know, unevenness in the texture here, here, and some patchiness around this area. And that is what the next segment is going to teach you, and that is frequency separation. Now, in this frequency separation segment, I'll go a little bit slower to teach you how to create those various layers so that you can make it yourself and create action. Now, once again, if you don't want to do that, you can always, you know, donate me 10 coffees or more, but if not, 
Just stay around, go through the tutorial, and it's free. Okay, first thing to do that frequency separation thing, there is about three to four methods to do it. I'll teach you my method and my way of applying, which is I find the simplest way and reversible way. First, you know, you have to duplicate two layers with a full edit stack. How to do it is Control, Alternate, Shift, E, and you'll see that this layer is a full edited layer, unlike, you know, this background itself. Control, Alternate, Shift, E. Just remember that again. And if you are using Mac, you'll be Alternate, Command, Shift, E, I believe. So you have one of these layers, just duplicate another, and then call this first one as Color, the next one as Texture, group them together into a group, and then call it Frequency Separation. Okay. So you have a color and texture itself. So for the color itself, how much are you going to do? What you're going to do with it is that you're going to just disable a texture layer first, just enable color, go to your filter, go to blur, go to Gaussian blur, and then apply enough blur that you cannot see texture on the skin anymore. I would recommend that that will be around four to five. It really depends. About five will be a good number normally. For most cameras out there, unless you are a GFX 100, 5 will be good. If you're a GFX 100, you may want to consider 6, 7, and 8. Depends on what you shoot and how sharp your lens is. But for a general action, 5 is just nice. So press OK, and now you see this really blur picture with no texture left, and that is what you want. This is your color layer. So what you're going to get, what you're going to do now is get the texture layer itself. So click on texture, click on image, click on apply image, and then remember to select color as the layer. Remember the blending as a for the blending itself, take subtract. For the scale is two, for the offset is one to eight. I'll freeze at this screen for a while. Okay, so as you can see that all these settings are necessary. There are a few ways to do frequency separation. It's just that I'm using this way because it will always ensure that my texture layer is perfectly the subtraction of my color layer itself. As such, I have a texture layer now, and you can really zoom in and see all the texture, you know, all the skin texture, the lashes are all on this image itself. So if I disable a texture layer, you'll see this very blur image. I enable it, you'll see this gray texture image. What you're going to do now is select the texture image, the blending option here, select linear light. Linear light. Okay, now what happens is that you will see this image itself that looks like the original image. In fact, if you zoom in a bit more, disable and enable the frequency separation layer, they are really, really close. There is, of course, some slight difference, but on general, they are really close. Now, I'm going to do one more step uh, that is not normal in frequency separation. is to create one more texture layer, just clone one more, and then set this to 50% opacity. Okay, so what am I doing now is actually create uh, additional sharpness in the shot itself, because later when we apply the smoothness across, you know, you will notice that you will lose quite a bit of sharpness if you don't do this. So now going back to color layer. So now the shot look just looks like a sharper version of the original shot. Notice that? And that is good because now we're going to go back to color. Okay. Of course, you can duplicate it, but if not, you can always do this way. I think that it's quite straightforward. Just go to Gaussian Blur and apply about six times to eight times the amount of blurness now. So uh, what am I doing? You will see later but just apply six to eight times the amount of blurness you applied before. So if I apply five, I apply 30 or 40. So for this demonstration, I'll just apply 35 it's somewhere in between to show you. So now if you zoom out, you'll get this really weird picture, this really blur, hazy picture with texture all around. Obviously, this is not what you want, but that is okay because what I'm going to do now is under frequency separation, I'm going to apply a mask. And once you apply the mask to this whole group, Invert the mask by using Control i Just invert the mask itself. And you will get the original image back. And now we're going to apply the mask. Click on the brush. Select white. Select flow about 5 to 10% for this. This one can get higher flow because you want to do it quite fast. Okay. For this, I will just demonstrate at maybe 7% flow. I think that will be a good number. And then take a brush size that is appropriate not too big, not too small, and make sure that hardness is somewhere below 50% because too much hardness, it will look really weird. Okay, so now I'm going to just apply onto the skin itself. You'll see the skin is getting smoothed out really, really quickly. And the best part of using this method, you can choose how much to smooth. 
Just dragging it more on the area will smooth more. Dragging it less will smooth less. And if you see something happen, you can always control Z or apply a black mask over it instead. So I'm just doing the white mask now. And this way can also allow you to control where to smooth and where not to smooth by just evading the mouth, the nostrils, the eyes quite easily. It's really much easier than many other techniques that I've seen so far that people taught. Now, one thing you notice is that applying this will result in the brighter region to turn darker and the darker regions to turn a bit you know, lighter because it's trying to blend through all the different skin colors through the entire image. As such, you know, it's trying to do some sort of averaging in this shot itself. So sometimes you may need to post-process to bring back the brightness or bring back the darkness. And that's what I call a sculpting. And you can do it. I can even show you here, but I won't go through in-depth on that. Okay, pretty much this is what we want. Now the skin is really, really, really too smooth. And what you can do now is, you know, you go on this layer and just play around with the opacity. How much do you need to make it look natural? And that is really the good part of this technique. It really can allow you to, you know, control how much you need. Maybe I would say 80% is just enough, you know? You don't really need 100% for this. Okay, and pretty much you can see now if you zoom out the whole shot, is really nice and smooth. And if you zoom in, you still keep the texture and the naturalness of the skin itself. This is something that if you have went through any like May 2 or whatever, will probably destroy the skin texture. And if you're going to have a very big print or you're going to sell this photo itself or, you know, give the soft copy to somebody and people are going to zoom in 100%, I believe that this is the better method. Okay, now as I said, I want to show you sculpting and I also want to show you how to prepare for web a bit on this shot itself. So I'll just show you a bit of sculpting. And sculpting is very similar to the burn and dodge. So I'm just going to sculpt her face just a little to just end this tutorial. I'm being a bit high-handed here and hard-handed here, I would say. Not high-handed, hard-handed here. But it's okay because i uh, pretty much done it quite a lot. Okay. And just remember that this smoothness, right, this uh, frequency separation smoothness can also be applied on the legs. Just don't apply it too much and make it look like wax. But, you know, you can apply on the legs a bit here. You remove some of the patchiness in the legs. I just noticed that usually any part of the body, the patchiness are a lot lesser than the face. The face has the most patchiness. As such, you need to apply quite a bit on the face, but not so much on the rest of the body itself. And uh, that's about it. Okay, I just want to touch up a bit more to just show you what you can do. Just burn the hair a bit so that it looks a bit more natural. And then for the mouth, just dodge just a little. The eyes also. And that's about it for the shot. The shot is already done and processed. You see a really, really smooth skin shot. And you know, if you zoom in, you still get to keep all the texture and information that the face should have. Now, if you want to compare before and after, let me group everything together and let me show you this thing. Before and after. Before and after. See, the skin is fixed up and it's really natural in looking. There is all the information that you want. So this is not part of the tutorial, but I'm going to show you one last step, which is sharpening the photo for purpose of Instagram or Facebook. Because when you really zoom out, you really cannot see any texture more. It looks like one whole pile of smoothness, and that may not be what you want. So in this case, you just go to sharpen, and just you know, do any of this sharpen. Depends on what you want. I can take unsharp mask or smart sharpening. I think unsharp mask is also okay. You know, just do a little bit of sharpening. What happens is that when it's small, you will need more sharpening. When it's big, you need less sharpening. Because when it's big, you zoom in all the way, you see the sharpening, you will see all the halos. But when it's small, it, the, details, the details tend to go away. So you need to sharpen to bring the details back up. And that's about it for today's tutorial. I hope you enjoy it. And once again, you know, if you want a full set of actions, just go down to my coffee below. If not, no, just follow all my tutorials. I will make more and more tutorials over this course of time. I will have Lightroom tutorials, Photoshop tutorials. And if you just follow it, it's free and pretty much you will learn something out of it on how to edit your photos and make them look good. I hope you enjoyed this. Do like and subscribe to see more of such information. If not, I will see you next time. Bye-bye.